is a big conversation that is threatening to go under the radar. But let's have it, because just last week, the Supreme Court and Parliament were pitched against these two very important institutions in this democracy, were pitched against each other. And it played out on the floor of Parliament. And it all revolves around the license to grow cannabis. The Supreme Court has struck down an act passed by Parliament that gave that license and an authority to the Minister of the Interior to indeed license you know, individuals and organizations to grow cannabis for industrial purposes. Um, also for, the, for obtaining fiber, seed, or for medicinal purposes. And that was very controversial uh, indeed. And this is the section in particular that was controversial, which indeed the Supreme Court had raised questions about what was the Supreme Court's point. And as far as this is concerned, it declared that this provision is unconstitutional, uh, as on the July 7, 2020, if you look at it, the president signed that uh, into law sometime in May of 2020. Um, Parliament did not act transparently in the passage of this act where the Supreme Court upheld and that the, it was a majority decision. The process was an issue for the Supreme Court. But just last week, the Interior Minister went back to Parliament and was very clear that the decision taken by the Supreme Court was wrong. The Speaker joined him in condemning the Supreme Court for what they had done. Watch what unfolded. Mr. Speaker, permit me to state that I respect the decision of the Supreme Court, but I do not agree with it. And Mr. Speaker, the reason that has been given is that that session had not been debated before this House when this House was passing the Narcotics Control Commission Act 2020 Act 1090. I hope that the three arms of government will work together and respect each other in cases of doubt. It's important to consult the other arm before giving finality to whatever decision the other arm wants to take. And I don't think that it's proper for the judiciary to, without knowing how we conduct our business here, really go into how we conduct the business and make such important decisions without consulting the House. That is improper. I have made this known to them, and I want this to be known publicly. This is for the benefit of the country. It's improper. That is the Speaker's uh, position there. The uh, Interior Minister himself also was, was outraged uh, by what the Supreme Court had done. And so what was the Supreme Court's uh, point as far as this is concerned? The Supreme Court was clear that as far as this law was, uh, is concerned, and as you heard the, um, the, the minister in question talk about it, they believe that as far as the process in Parliament is concerned, due process wasn't followed, and so they struck it out. So what we have now, and on the back of what happened last week, the Interior Minister reintroduced this section, this section uh, 43, which is this, the, the subject of controversy, reintroduced this section back to Parliament, word for word, by the way, which in essence says that the minister may grant a license for the cultivation of cannabis, which is, which in terms of potency, not more than 0 0.3 THC, for industrial purposes, for obtaining fiber, seed, and for medicinal purposes, right? And that, in essence, is what this uh, section particularly says. That now has been introduced, and there is unanimous support in Parliament for this, and so we expect that this will pass without controversy. Just reintroduce the wording exactly. Okay, the point is, Supreme Court, you said we didn't follow procedure. Okay, we'll follow the procedure now and simply 
uh, pass it back into law. So barring any last minute hitches, we expect this to come uh, into force and the president, you know, we expect that we'll sign this back into law. But that is where we are with this controversy that played out last week. Well, Ghana isn't the only country uh, on the continent that has that is on the path of legalizing the cultivation of cannabis either for medicinal purposes, for seed or for fiber, as we've said, uh, as we are seeing in this particular act that uh, parliament is about to pass. We don't see anything uh, standing in his way to seek to the house. The speaker himself is, is in favor of it. If you listen to the speaker, it is more because of the economic benefits they see. Billions of dollars they mentioned that Ghana is losing out because the Supreme Court uh, had thrown this law out. If you go to Lesotho, in 2017, they passed this. And again, the emphasis there is that this particular act, just like in Lesotho, explicitly forbids the growing of cannabis for recreational use. You see it in South Africa as well. Also in 2018, they also um, legalized the cultivation of cannabis for medicinal purposes and for, and for other uses as well, other than recreational. You also see in Zimbabwe, similar story in 2018, and Zambia, uh, the same story in Malawi also in 2020, just like Ghana. This was actually passed and assented to by the president until it was challenged in the Supreme Court and, and thrown out. Um, so all of them for no medicinal purposes. And if you come to the African story, all these countries did so primarily because of the economic benefit they see in the cultivation of cannabis for, for, for that purposes, right? And, and for the purposes of medicine, for fiber, or for seed. And I'm, I'm quoting that because that is what is in uh, the act or the bill now that is being considered uh, by parliament. But is that the only way to look at this? Because if you look at Ghana, and, and this tells you a story, we've, we've had challenges with cannabis for a while. If you look at the Africa Cannabis Report, um, we've had a challenge in terms of illegal cannabis passing through this country. We become a transit hub for it. And if you look at this in terms of the, um, the, the intersection of how many countries use Ghana as a transit point to, to, to traffic cannabis illegally to other countries. So you're coming from South Africa, it goes to Ghana. If you're coming from Bolivia, coming to, coming to Ghana. And then that then leaves Ghana to other areas in the Netherlands, the UK, et cetera. So Ghana is known to have become a transit point for, for, for cannabis, which is unauthorized. Now we want to grow it. And those who are opposed to this say, if you do this, how do you monitor? How do you ensure that this is not abused by people who really want to take advantage of the country, which even without this law, they are taking advantage of Ghana anyway to transit cannabis through it. I mean, so if you give this license in a country where we know that we, are, we, we struggle with implementation and enforcement, and monitoring, then you're opening the floodgates for all these um, characters to then now take advantage and grow it locally and export it to other areas, when indeed it may be a violation of the law because specifically the, 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 the THC content has to be not more than 0 0.3, uh, but also you only grow it for three specific purposes, for industrial purposes, but also for, for the three things I've mentioned. So that is a concern that those who are opposed to this uh, have raised as well. well. We'll get into that pretty shortly. But there's a lot of money at stake here, which is, and I listened to the parliamentary debate, which really was a fundamental basis for this. And the Africa Cannabis Report talks about 2023 projections worth 7.1 billion. So that's a lot of money there. And if you look at the breakdown, the, the projections for recreational cannabis is still the most lucrative one, but th that is what we, the law explicitly forbids, right? That is what is projected to, to, to bring in in terms of its worth, some 6.3 billion. If you look at the uh, medicinal cannabis, it's not bringing in as much compared to the recreational cannabis, some $800 million. So that is a fraction of what you get from recreational cannabis. And, and that's where the temptation is. People look at these numbers and say, if you give me the opportunity, open this floodgates here, Part of this then becomes here because people will hide under the license and then grow for recreational purposes because that is where the money is. Money is the big factor in why illicit drugs thrive in a lot of the parts of the, of the world where it's become an issue. So that is a fear for many because if you look at the numbers there, there it, there'll be a shift towards recreational use for this. How do you control this if you pass this act? Again, if you look at the countries of the continent, really, who, who, are, who are already big players in this, both recreational and medicinal, 
If you go to Nigeria, talking about 3.74 billion. So that market in Nigeria is huge, right? If you come to South Africa, 1.7 billion, both recreational and for medicinal use. Morocco, 600 million. You come to uh, Lesotho, 90 million. And if you come to a country like Zimbabwe, just 80 million uh, dollars. There is money involved. And we have Nigeria, a big player in there, very close to us. They have not yet, and I haven't read that yet. And they haven't um, done what we're doing now. So if you grow it here, people may look to the Nigerian market because it's, it's significant there, uh, more than $3 billion. And if you look at the forecast going forward, this is the forecast. And the forecast tells recreational, um, this is for Ghana, by the way, and according to the, the Africa Cannabis Report, that the, the Ghanaian market, in terms of recreational uh, cannabis, is worth some $326 million. If you look at for medicinal purposes, it's just tiny. That's some 380000 And I, I, I believe this is grossly understated, by the way, but that's what the report tells us. And I'm pretty sure there's a bit more research that we need to do to understand this a bit more before this law is passed with all the questions that are raised. If you look at the country profile of Ghana, and this is another interesting data that I found. We are 30.8 million. Alcohol consumption alone is 3.7 liters per capita. But then look at the cannabis users. We have 3.8 million uh, cannabis users in this country. And most of them are doing that because of the law currently, illegally, right? And that's why there's this push now to do it in a way that you can regulate. But the Narcotics Control Commission Act also provides for the rehabilitation of people who are affected by you know, the abuse of, of cannabis. So people say the law in itself is a good act, it's a good law, except for this section 43, which is controversial. And the average cost of cannabis is 80 cents per gram. So it's, it's, it's pretty affordable for people to grab and just smoke um, as far as that is concerned. So let's sit down and have a conversation there because it's a very important conversation to have considering that the interior minister and the speaker are in agreement that this uh, decision by the Supreme Court. It's a travesty of justice, they believe, and it has shortchanged Ghana quite significantly. My guests will join me for a conversation on this very important matter. If you stay with me after the break. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, and as you know, uh, PM Express is always brought to you by Cherry Tree Properties. We develop spaces as though we were doing uh, it for ourselves and going to occupy ourselves. Syntex tanks, it is strong, it is tough. Alomo Bites experience greatness in every moment. And then Ghana AIDS uh, Commission uh, as well. And as I've been talking about, uh, cherry tree properties, desires, our wishes, beauty is a promise of happiness, but passion is everything. Thinking about buying a new home, uh, talk to those who build with passion. Sloan Square, a new gated community development uh, at Sakumono, developed by Cherry Tree Properties, a one-of-a-kind, well-planned luxury you've never experienced. Contact us on 0553-662-366, 0553-662-366, Cherry Tree Properties, sophistication and class. And then also, if you want to store water, uh, the, you need to call them. They are Syntex Tank. No matter your water needs, Syntex Tank uh, has it all. Uh, Syntex Tank has first introduced double layer tank, and now you can have as many layers as you want. Uh, Syntex Tank has first introduced the white inner layer tanks uh, in Ghana. Uh, we now introduce to you the customer specs order, which lets you order any color uh, uh, and size of preference. Syntex Tank gives you the longest warranty of seven years, which no other tank gives you in Ghana. So whatever uh, your water consumption, size of project or demand, choose Syntex Tanks. We have agents nationwide. You can call us on 0244-335-168 or shop online at SyntexGH.com. Syntex Tanks are you strong, are you tough. And I, this is a two-part show tonight. Um, uh, from 10, we'll be talking about this conversation. Occupy Finance Ministry. The bondholders are uniting to hit the streets tomorrow. But really, why? We thought this matter had been resolved. Apparently not. So we'll speak to Senor Hossi and Dr. Joel Jangba, uh, two of the conveners of the two, you know, uh, 
coming together, the two associations coming together uh, to pick at the finance ministry. You want to stay with us uh, for that here on PMXS. But now, though, uh, I have with me, joining me for a conversation, Nanajiman, uh, who is the president of the Hemp Association of Ghana. Also joining me is uh, Peter uh, Badimak Yaro. Uh, Peter, thanks for joining us here on PM Express. He is executive director of Basic Needs Ghana, and they invest a lot in rehabilitation of the people, etc., who uh, get uh, affected by such drugs. Uh, Sheikh uh, Arimayal Shaibu is a spokesperson for the National Chief Imam and the Vice Chairman uh, uh, and Board of Trustees, Friends of Mental Health. Sheikh, thank you very much. Uh, but I want to start with Kwame Nyimeduenchi. He is the chairperson of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee. This particular uh, act that was passed and then, you know, struck out by Supreme Court is back in Parliament and is with his committee. Um, Mr. Nyimedu, thanks for your time here on uh, PM Express. From what we heard from the Interior Minister last week, uh, this uh, Section 43 is being reintroduced. What does that mean in terms of Parliament's considering and passing it now? Because it was passed and signed by the President already. Hello, Mr. Imedu Oh, we may have lost him on the line there. We'll try and get him back for, for, for his thoughts on this. Um, Peter, let me start with you. I mean, whilst we wait for the uh, Member of Parliament and the Chair to come and explain to us the mm -hmm. legal processes towards the passing, um, I'm pretty sure you were here when this particular act was passed and assented to. Um, and when the Supreme Court struck it down, I wonder what your reaction was then. Did you foresee that it may come back? Yeah, um, I foresaw that it would come back for the obvious reasons that the debate between prohibition and regulation has always raged on. Mm. And uh, you, depending on who is driving it, uh, you would see if those for regulation are in the majority or in the driving seat, they would always want to project that. And I think that is what played uh, between the Supreme Court and Parliament. Okay, so, yes. so Parliament, you, you Parliament, obviously the MPs were, were in strong support of this. Yes. And they passed it. But the Supreme Court thought, well, procedurally there was an issue yes. um, with it. But what, what's your stance on it though? Now that it's been brought back, from everything that we're reading, this will be passed because, again, Parliament is in strong support of it. Our stance have always been on the side of people who, for whatever reason, uh, become uh, dependent or needing support for using drugs. Mm. That is basically uh, our point of view. If their rights can be respected, they can be given the needed support, uh, so be it. But what we have seen in Ghana is that you would have laws that do not put in place safeguards for people like uh, people who would be using drugs. Mm. If you now um, more or less open the floodgates, say, all right, it's okay to use it for medicinal purposes, and we know that people would uh, go overboard either because their genetic makeup did not make them uh, withstand it and so fall victim of uh, becoming addicts and needing support, what safeguards are there for mm -hmm. that? You've passed a law saying, yes, recreation and all that. So, so the uh, law is actually explicit. Yeah. Explicit for bits. Industrial and... Uh, explicit for bits, the growing of cannabis for industrial purposes, but allows the licensing for, of, of the growing of cannabis for industrial purposes, specifically purposes of uh, fiber, seed, and for medicinal use. Yeah. Is it because you don't have alternatives? So that must be? It's not a false. It's not like that is the only option for fibers and other industrial products mm. that such uh, plants can give. If you had no alternative at all, then it makes a lot of sense. But if you have, perhaps you may want to think again to ask yourself, should we allow this to happen and you get a lot more becoming dependent, requiring support and rehabilitation, would you be using what you are going to earn to rehabilitate them? Or they will just fall through the cracks mm. as we are seeing it's, it's taking place. Stay with me, let me bring in Sheikh. Sheikh, so this law has gone back to Parliament now. 
What do you expect now from Parliament? If, if you had a conversation with the parliamentarians and the speaker, who obviously stated his position that he's for this and wants this passed as soon as possible, what do you tell him? Hello, Sheikh Arimei. Well, Sheikh. Thank you so much um, for the opportunity. Uh, matters of drugs, I mean, generally, uh, must be um, considered an uh, issue of worry because of the consequence and the effect it has on, on the users. And so such matter, um, for us to legalize it, requires that we actually deepen and broaden the consultations so that the communities that are going to be affected will be well informed mm. about the choice, the, the, the policy choice that we are making now about the legalization of, uh, of, of the cannabis. Uh, in my view, I don't think that that scope of consultation has been done to really show uh, the community uh, about the harmlessness of the policy as it, it stands at the moment. And so me, for me, so there's a certain kind of discomfort and trepidation about um, the free legalization of, uh, of, 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 of substance abuse. Um, secondly, it appears to me that we have not been given the assurance respect to how our fight against um, drugs generally have been successful. So now that we are now going to open the door for legalizing cannabis, having in mind that we have our youth have the strong propensity uh, for taking the, the cannabis, um, we have no assurance that there's a certain enforcement regime that can guarantee the protection of our, of our young, young people. So, so from the beginning, that is the initial um, um, worry or discomfort that I uh, would want to express um, and, and if I have my own way say um, knowing what drugs do to the human person and, and cannabis is only one one of the of, of the of the drugs that we are we are, we are talking about here mm. um, then we need to tread cautiously on that path yeah but, but uh, Sheikh, so considering uh, Sheikh, considering that this is really not a new piece of legislation. In fact, it was considered, approved, assented to by the president, became law, went to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court overturned it because of a procedural issue. I mean, aren't we past the stage of consultation? Because this really is just fixing a small, tiny section in a bigger law. Well, I think if, if this is where, where we have gotten to, for me, the assurance as to how we can monitor, because we are talking about a THC that must be limited, come to 0.3% or, or below. Now, what is the, uh, the monitoring mechanism that can guarantee us that we will not have the brand that comes with the H, uh, THC that is more than 0.3%? Because uh, we, we know that there are types that comes about, say, 0.775%. Of the THC, so what is the monitoring mechanism that will ensure or give us assurance that other brands um, that are not captured by this particular uh, law uh, will will be, will be will be taken care of? Uh, for me, if we don't get that one clearly, and, if, and also the issue of enforcement, um, what? Does the law say about an effective enforcement that those who will even come in with a brand that the law does, does not uh, allow, so that we save, you know, the space of our young people who have the strong propensity to use this, and then already we have, I mean, serious problem on our, on our hands um, where drug abuse is on, on the ascendancy. Our young people are destroying themselves. We have not succeeded um, in dealing with it and so on, and then we are now going to open up um, this new you know, mm -hmm. door for I mean, legalizing the drugs. So for me, as somebody coming from a religious community, whose community 
I must underscore, is affected seriously. My community is affected by drug use. And so I'm very, very conscious of it and what effect it has on our, com uh, on our, on our community. Okay. So if the okay. law can give us the assurance that our young people can well be protected from getting involved in the brand that we do not want, uh, then probably for industrial and medicinal purposes, as has been uh, indicated, uh, we may soften our position on that. Okay, interesting. Um, uh, Nana, so you, sh you at, at least identify and empathize and sympathize with the concerns that have been expressed both on this matter? No, of course not. Tell me why. Of course not. You see, one of the greatest levels of ignorance is when people talk about something that they don't know anything about. And uh, with all the greatest respect to Peter and Bismillah Sheikh. to Sheikh, they don't know what they're talking about. Because they're talking about drugs. But what is before Parliament has nothing to do with drugs at all. What we are talking about is industrial cannabis, not recreational cannabis. And, and even in your introduction, you spent a lengthy amount of time talking about the consumption of cannabis through smoke. That is not what is on the table in Parliament right no, now. No, I didn't. There, yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Well, the, the law is in two parts. The <laughs> section 43 is in two parts. Talk the, the industrial use is one part. Yeah. The second part is the express forbidding of um, recreational use. That's just one line. Well, yeah, it's true. It's but, just but, one but, line. But the, but the above line is also just one no, sentence. You, you let, you, so no, you have no. to do both. It's more than one sentence. It's more than one well, sentence. Well, it's, it's a Look, couple of, it's, it's one sentence, uh, both of them are the same. Can I finish? You have to, you have to do both. You let me finish. I'm just pointing out to you that that's not You, you let me finish, because yeah. we, can, we can have this no, ding no, no, dong just, after. Just I'm very clear in what I'm saying, that what we're discussing right now, there's no need for this discussion at all because what is on the table in Parliament is not recreational cannabis, it's industrial cannabis. The issue of 0 0.3 or 0 0.77 is even neither here nor there, because the people in our communities, in the Muslim communities, who smoke weed, the weed that they smoke is not 0.77%. And if anybody smoked weed at 0.77%, nothing is going to take place at all. When you talk about recreational cannabis, you're talking about a THC content of 10, 15, 20, and 25%. That's what you're talking about. How do you guarantee and that what is produced you, you is actually 0 0.3 you, you hold on. THC? I think that's a fundamental I, question. I'm, com I'm coming. So I want to clear up this first to let both your participants know that what they're talking about is not on the table. You cannot abuse industrial cannabis, but you can make hempcrete from it, you can make hemp wood from it, you can make charcoal from it, mm. you can make cosmetics from but it. But I want to go to their main textiles. concern. The main concern is so 0 0.3 but THC. Main, but their main concern... Yeah, just a second, just a second. 0 0.3 THC. Yes. How do you ensure that it's actually that potent? 0 0.3 or less, no, which is what the... the 0 0.3. How do, you, how do you ensure that? How do you monitor that? Let me that? say this to you. When you use the word potent, don't use it in the same breath as 0 0.3, because that's a mismatch. 0 0.3 THC is like 0% THC. Yeah, but that's not my question. Okay, right? How do you ensure that but it I, is that 0 0.3 or less? I'm contextualizing. I'm yeah. contextualizing. You will test. You will carry out tests. The Narcotics Control Commission will be geared up to come to the farms to take samples and also to test on the spot what the THC levels are. And let me say this to you as well, because in your, in your uh, opening remarks, you talked about the floodgates and people now cultivating recreational cannabis. In, Under the in, guise of It's not possible. Medicinal. It's not possible. How? Why because, is possible? because industrial cannabis will, will cause the THC cannabis, if you like, to cross-pollinate. The pollen from the industrial hemp, once it goes, blows across and gets onto the normal cannabis popularly known as weed, it will change it. It will no longer be potent at all. And the two plants are distinctively different the industrial hemp grows to at least 16 feet tall 
whereas the cannabis that you've all been talking about grows to about six feet, no more than seven feet, but it's, it's wide and it's bushy uh, and, and it, it has its buds on there. And it's the buds that are dried and then smoked. And it's those buds that have the THC in it. We're not talking about the same thing here today. I've come to talk about industrial hemp, but you're all talking about the real deal, cannabis, recreational mm -hmm. cannabis. Thankfully, the chairman of the uh, uh, committee that is looking into this has joined us. Uh, Ms. Ayn Midwichu, thanks for your time here on PM Express. Uh, yeah, good evening to your listeners. Great to have you. Uh, if you can kindly update us on where we are tonight with the, uh, the uh, Narcotics Control Commission Act, which, of course, the Supreme Court struck it down. But then last week, we saw the Interior Minister on the floor reintroducing that Section 43. Um, where are we in terms of the consideration of that particular section and the entire act? Thank you very much. We, um, it was done, uh, it was read in the House and referred to the committee. We considered it under a certificate of emergency and uh, will report to the House Tomorrow. this week. What has happened? And I'm enjoying the, uh, the debate that you are having with your hosts and they've done the education, talking about industrial cannabis. That is our thinking in Parliament. And uh, when it went to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court argued that we did not um, uh, discuss or debate that particular clause. And then uh, the Supreme Court has found it uh, from the law. And that is exactly the same clause that the Minister of Interior introduces in Parliament. And that is what we have to debate and uh, submit. But I do not think the Supreme Court was right in saying that we did not debate it adequately. In Parliament, when we are making laws, if there is no controversy about the law, the, a particular um, uh, bill or clause, we don't debate it. Most of the time, we don't say anything. We mention, we read the head note of the clause, and then uh, if any person has anything to say, add or subtract from the proposal, the person says it, and then uh, we could debate. It is not that every clause must be introduced and uh, it, introduced for debate. But the Supreme Court said that when the matter, the, the issue was before us, it was not part of the memorandum that the Ministry of Interior submitted to Parliament. And it, it came up. Yes, it is not everything that is given <coughs> to us in Parliament that must be part of the, it, it, it. if they are bringing it to parliament yes obviously the memorandum covering the bill of Muscovari. but if it is introduced when it comes to parliament the memorandum cannot cover it mm. because the memorandum is a summary of what the sponsoring ministry or the sponsoring person is information that the person is giving us but if it comes up and then we come out with any idea, we add to, we introduce anything, then obviously the memorandum cannot cover it. So I am sure this time we will debate it adequately and uh, no, uh, I'm not sure the Supreme Court will say that we didn't debate it. Just for, just, just, just for clarity, so mm -hmm. you, you, this will now be considered under the certificate of urgency? Yes. Okay, when, when do you plan to do this? Well, we sat on it uh, last Friday. The, it was referred to the uh, Defense and Interior and the Leadership of Constitutional and uh, the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs were added. So on, on, on Friday, the committee sat on it. Tomorrow, Tuesday, when we sit, if the report is ready, we will lay the report and then we will do the speech. So. So clearly this will be passed then. But the question is, where, where are the safety mechanisms in the Act to ensure 
that what you are going to now legalize in terms of the growing of industrial cannabis is actually industrial cannabis that will be grown by people who are licensed to grow it. If the law says that you are to, to grow industrial cannabis and you choose to do anything else, there are ways that we can take it. But I don't see that in the act. That's what I'm asking. What, what, where in the act does it state how you first of all verify that it is industrial cannabis that is 0.3 THC and below? No, no, no. I think you are asking the wrong question. The, we, the law has to be passed. If the law is passed, other things, the law says you have to, this is what is allowed. Anything else that is not allowed, you do it, you plow the law. So you don't have to say that every other thing must come in this very law. No, that's not how it works. We cannot bring every rule, everything under one umbrella. No, the law says that these are the parameters within which Ghanaians are supposed to operate. And you want to choose to, you choose to operate outside the parameters. Obviously, you face the law, and you have a branch of the law. Yeah, but, 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 you, but you say that. But to determine if somebody had actually broken the law, you must be monitoring. You must be enforcing. What is the enforcement mechanism? We have so you don't have to, we don't have to split heads over this. No, but, I mean, no, but, but, but that is an important subject, Mr. Nimudu. somebody is arrested for uh, 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 cannabis, uh, pleasure, cannabis, and whatnot, they don't just get up and then prosecute the person. They send it to the lab and test the kind of substance that is, that is confiscated or taken from the person before the person is prosecuted. So if anybody would want to do anything contrary to what the law would permit, the person would not go scot-free. Yes, but how, because how, remember, this is not just something that you can look with your eye and say it meets a legal requirement. What is, again, what is the enforcement Mayana, mechanism? I do not know. When you called me, you were speaking to somebody who was educating me. And I think he knows very much about this. I enjoy his uh, uh, debate, his lecture. And uh, I think even he was telling us, I do not know, but what he was saying, even the way it grows, there's a, a, a lot of difference. And I'm sure the narcotic uh, unit would know more about it, and they can pound on anybody that is doing the wrong thing. No, but, 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 but the act that we are talking about is the mm. Narcotics Control Commission Act, and it's very, very broad. Right. You, don't find, you, don't, you don't find it worrying that this whole act has this clause in it, but in that act, you didn't find space for the enforcement mechanism and the safety nets to ensure that this is not abused? No, no, no. That, you know, the, your fear, I see the, where you're coming from, but you don't have to fear, because mm. we have a whole of unique regulating this. We didn't want, yes, every Ghanaian wouldn't want people to be, and I'm told that the one that we, we legislated on the 0 0.3, the THC and whatnot, even if you would smoke a, 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 a barrel food, it would do you anything. You will not be intoxicated. That's what we are allowed. Um, please stay with me. Reassured, this is the chairman reassuring you that um, Are you reassured? My Honourable MP and Nana here um, are not giving us assurance. It's this. In the first place, what has informed the need to bring about the Act? If you answer that question, you would see that you want to kill a certain mischief. And what we are worried or concerned about is that people are going to ride on this legislation and do the very things you are saying that is not what the law is talking they can't. about. It's not possible. It's very possible. No, it's not possible. Because you're paranoid. right now... You're all paranoid. It's not possible. There's no paranoia I want here. To I'll bring you in. Paranoia here. I want to bring you in. Right now, you have these uh, drugs that Sheikh and I are talking about. Which drugs? Being consumed. You are talking about producing industrial yeah, yeah. products, isn't it? 
Yes. You want to produce industrial He says products. the two are distinct. Distinct. They're not the same plant. Yes. There's industrial cannabis and there's recreational cannabis. You are, putting, the, you're, you're you're cannabis. are putting this in place because... He says they are different. What people are thinking about how recreational cannabis are being used. No, that's not the reason why it's, it's being put in place. Yes. No, that's not the reason why. So the, the reason why... You would have to be sure that you have enough safeguards to support people who, for whatever reason, use them and become dependent. So, so the, the act also you know? says that the commission is empowered to collaborate with the agencies we, we to give them all, rehabilitation. Look, we have all seen how the commission works. To give works. them rehabilitation. We have all, whether it's a board, narcotics control board or commission, we have all seen how it has worked. You're, you're talking as if there's no law in the country. When someone, when someone is caught with, with in possession of we, what mm. happens? They go to court and they go to prison. We have thousands of people who are in prison now for possession of negligible amounts of cannabis. Negligible amounts. They're doing 10 years. Some are doing 15 years. Families totally destroyed because somebody has a spliff. That's a joke. But you are talking as if there's no law. There is a law here. And the law says that, and it will say that soon when the president assents to it, that the minister has the due authority to issue licenses for people who wish to cultivate industrial hemp mm -hmm. with a THC level of 0 0.3. It can never... It's in black and white. I think that's what, yeah, that's what I'm quite on. a controversy. Oh, no, but hold on. Let me finish. Yes. Let me finish. finish yes. <laughs> because you're not asking the right questions, right? <laughs> Let me tell you that. You're not. It's 0 0.3 THC. It can never, ever, ever in this world or the next be abused. Period. There will be no need for rehabilitation no, I mean, centers you, you, no, that, that, on 0 again, 0.3. Again, you, you say the second. You, there, you, there'll you, be no you, need you for say, rehabilitation you say, you say, centers. That the wrong questions have been asked. But that's not the concern. I think you're addressing the wrong concern. The, the, the concern is... The concern isn't no. a legitimate concern. <coughs> the, 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 I'm the, no, I'm coming. No, but, but, but the listen, concern but is not legitimate. No, it the is. The concern is not valid. It is valid. And it's not valid or legitimate on the basis that what is before Parliament mm -hmm. right now is not what they are concerned no, about. No, but the, the, the issue that they have is that you have a law that specifies very clearly what is being licensed. But this is an issue of also enforcement, making sure that what the law has permitted is actually what is, what is being When brought. you break the law, what happens? It's, 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 it's a second, and I'm coming to the question. The question that they're asking is, where is the mechanism to ensure that what the law has licensed is actually what people are growing? The police force, the Ghana police the force. The Ghana police are put to you. That, that, is, got the, the that is the, the mechanism. That, that is the mechanism. The Ghana police force hasn't got the capacity to determine what is 0 0.3 THC and what is industrial but, but, the, but the Narcotics Control Commission does. And I've said to you that, look, you, you just you, let's get rational about the whole thing. People are going to apply. Let's say 10 people apply. Let's say six people get licenses. Now, those six farmers or those six farms will be monitored by the Narcotics Control Commission. That's an assumption. Oh, hold on a it's moment. It's not in the app. Hold on a moment. It's there, you see? Yeah, what, I have you read see, the app. What you don't know... The chairman, the chairman of the... Have, the you, read of the the legislative, have you read the legislative instrument? Well, I'm, I'm reading the app. I'm asking you a parliament. I'm telling you have, what I've read. It's have not you in read, the app. Have you read the legislative well, instrument? Well, the chairman of the committee... Oh, please, I Evans. asked that question. Evans. And says, they are rely on agency. It's a yes or no. You've talked about the police. Wait, it's a yes or no. They're an agency. The police is an agency. Listen, if you read the legislative instrument, and unfortunately Peter and Sheikh don't know what that is either, you will see that within the legislative instrument, all the questions about safeguards are covered within that document. Uh -oh. And that document is a document that operationalizes the law. You can't pass a law and not have an LI. Right? So there's an LI for this law, and within that LI, all the concerns, the, the, the unvalid concerns that uh, are being raised here are covered within that document. If someone was to cultivate recreational cannabis after being given a license to cultivate industrial cannabis with a THC, THC level of 0 0.3, and narcot com, comes there, 
to see that that is what they have done. They have broken the law. Narcot will tell them to destroy it, and also Narcot will report them to the police. Well, I wanna... and also they will get their license revoked. Well, well, well. This is a country where we know that the <laughs> uh, state agencies have a significant challenge enforcing the law, even if they have the will to do it, because of. The nature of the beast we're dealing with here, subject to abuse everywhere in the world, and that is why if you watch the numbers, recreational cannabis brings in far more. That is a big deal. Let me bring you Sheikh. Sheikh, so you've heard, the, you've heard the chairman of the committee, and it makes the point that be reassured. Um, the safety mechanisms are there. You have the Niger man say there is a legislative instrument on this matter. Does it address your concern that these two plans are distinct and you cannot um, confuse industrial cannabis with recreational cannabis? No, it, it, it does not, because uh, um, what I listen to him sounds more theoretical than, than, than practical. Absolutely. And um, the point that we are making here is that even in fighting other national vices, we have not been able to, to have an effective regime of enforcement. Um, for example, I, I'm just using this as an, an example. Even the fight against Galamse, for example. Oh. I mean, the laws are there. How effective have they been? How successful have we been in fighting corruption with all the enforcement and the agencies that we, we have? How successful have we, have we been? So that's why our concern here is that do we, do we have an effective, strong, tried enforcement regime that will ensure that we do not open the floodgate for people to come in under the guise of cultivating industrial cannabis and then they go in to do to cultivate the type that we do not want and i think that that is uh, uh, nana, nana got us wrong from the very beginning and he indicated that we even didn't know what we we're talking about we we no. know what we but that we started with a generic a description of the problem, and we are seeing drugs, but cannabis is one of those. Yeah. And if you come yeah. to talk about the component of, of it, that gives the sensation. And it says it says that the cannabis we are going to talk about now should be limited to 0 0.3. And we are saying that what is our mechanism? What is our mechanism for ensuring that we are able to maintain this kind of level of the THC? Because we have a very weak enforcement regime in this country, we, are, we, we do not have that assurance. So we, we, we understand the problem. Nana's concern is more economic. It's more economic and financial and material. We are talking more about the, the protection of the human person. Because we have seen what drugs, generally speaking, including cannabis, are done to people. And that's why if there's any brand of the cannabis that is going to be introduced and be legalized, then we want to get the assurance that our enforcement regime will be able to really restrain the, the brand that we do not want to see um, I mean, from, from, from coming into, into, into the market. That's I mean, exactly... Yeah, I mean, I want to quickly bring in... But, um, but I, do not, I do not get that assurance. If you look at the questions you are putting to Nana and the... And the Chairman. I mean, we are talking to people about... How, how do we ensure that we don't open the gate for the recreational use? And we know the propensity among our youth is very, very high for, for, take, for taking that. What is the enforcement regime like? And what has it been in our country? And I've given you examples of some of the challenges that we have in this country, and our enforcement regimes have not been able to fight them. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Even general drugs... Yeah, I mean, and Sheikh, yeah. I'll quickly, I want to, I want to bring in um, the, the chairman again just to wrap up with him. Um, if you can clarify, when this law was passed and ascended to by the president, was there a legislative instrument to go with it subsequent to its passage? Yes. Hello, Mr. Yes, can you hear me, sir? There was something that I needed to respond to. Um, I think we are are doing uh, the whole argument here is legal and morality. People think that once we are talking about cannabis, there is, there is a tendency that people would abuse it. About two weeks ago, 
a young man was buried in my hometown because he abused appetite. He drank appetite in larger quantities. He didn't eat. And in the morning, when they open it, so. Mr. Imedu, if, if, you don't mind, if you don't mind speaking a bit into the microphone, I'm having a bit of an interference, but I can hear you by his faint. Well, I'm saying that. Great. You can hear me now. I'm I can loud that, and clear, yes. Yes. Being a culture, I think we are arguing about morality and legality. Now, Parliament has found, and the ministry brought it to us, that there is uh, a lot of advantages that we are going to get from this industrial cannabis. And uh, we this it, the psycho, they use the word, the TH system. It should not be more than 0.3. And I'm told that even if you should use a bucket full, a barrel full, it's not going to destroy you like we think. Indian, uh, uh, the Indian um, that is why we are saying that we are not going there. After that we use alcohol, it's when people abuse it, they die. But it was not allowed until we realized that we could use it for commercial purposes. So people must not say that we are immoral. If we pass a law, and the advantage is that we are looking at industrial cannabis that we could use for other things in the country. And it can easily be checked by the agency. It can easily be checked by the agencies, whether LI or no LI. <laughs> Let them look at the law. And why the Supreme Court has found this law was, the mean, to me, the reason. That's why the ministry has brought it up, that we go through it again, that it was not debated. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, then, and that's what I say that. I, and I think that was unfortunate. If they say that we didn't debate. Yeah, I mean, and, and that point was, was made strongly by the speaker. Just, just on that point again, just for clarity. Do we, did we have, at the time when it was first passed, an ally to accompany it? Well, I'm not answering that, you see. I didn't answer that because it's not about ally or the act itself. It is, if it is law, it is law. But what I'm saying that the arguments that are going on, I hear one argument to say that, look, let us be moral. The other side saying that this is the legal thing. The legal thing we have said is that it is 0.3 cannabis, that is industrial mm -hmm. cannabis. Whether there is a lie or it's an act, is the law. And we have to go by that. And we have realized that I was educated at the committee meeting that this would give us an advantage. It is let's go beyond the moral aspect and see what benefits we could have as a country. Okay. If somebody can do, grow, a pot and it can bring some income to the country if it is not the cannabis for pleasure, if it is not the Indian hemp that we smoke to, to, to so people get confused and uh, get diseases and whatnot, then we, I think we are good to go. On that basis, we all understood it and passed. The, 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 the law the, accordingly. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. And let me wrap right. up quickly. Um, so, so that is it. Um, don't get worried. <laughs> he says. Um, obviously, you, you, you disagree with that, with that yeah. position there. He says you're making a moral argument. Do um, you accept that that's what it is? It's a moral not argument? Not at all. Uh, it's not moral. It's more health and mm. rights. It's more health and rights. The other question could be, are we saying we've run out of all ideas of generating income? Because that's a fundamental and growing, argument. And growing hemp. Yes, we have run is out. Is the aloe under. Yes, we have run out. So hemp is the... So we are desperate. It's, it's a desperate it. it's the green, Because it's the green what, what you are going to do, it's more of going to spend on your health of your population than you're going to rick in. Honestly, if you are not so you, careful. You have, no, I, 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 you have no idea. I, I, finally, I'm I think you are more idealistic. You have no idea. You, you, you have no idea. Peter, let me ask no you. Idea. So, He's confirmed now that this will be passed under a certificate of urgency. Yes. Very it's few true. things go through that. The, which means that in a, the, the, the cannabis way. for recreation would simply just ride on the back of industrial cannot. cannabis cannot. to fester what we don't want to see. Mm. That's just all. Mm. And what we are saying is, Nobody is against what would be economically beneficial 
to the states. What we are asking and claiming should happen is safeguards for those who fall to the cracks. Yeah. No, no. As we sit now, our current regime is not even responding. You have a driving license? Our you, you have a driving our license? Lives. I have a driving license. Do you have one? Mm -hmm. Yeah? When you drive through the traffic light, what happens? Have you broken the law? You have, yeah. Does the law take its course? No, but I, I get away with <laughs> it sometimes. <laughs> you get away with it yeah. sometimes. But that's, that's, that's the problem, isn't it? That's good. That is the problem, problem. Now, let me with say, this. Yeah, but that's a lot not, of people so will grow not, this, this illegally no, and will get away with they it. they can't. Let me tell you, some of them will end up in the school. Let me tell you some of the benefits. Because Sheikh said I'm just interested in economics. He's just reinforcing the point. They don't know what he's talking about. Very briefly, because I have a minute. Because when Pete came in, I told Pete, Pete deals with people who have epilepsy. CBD can cure epilepsy. Yeah? Planting hemp is also good for the environment, not just good for the economy. It's good for the environment. <clears throat> it, can, it can reclaim the lands that have been poisoned in Galamse. Right now, it can reclaim those lands and also the water bodies. But I want to tell you this. Very finally. Do you know that the more hemp that is grown in this country, it will reduce the amount of illegal cultivation of cannabis and it will drive them indoors simply because you can't cultivate weed within a 50 mile radius of industrial hemp okay. because of the cross pollinization. Uh, okay. Sheikh, very final word to you. Um, <laughs> Parliament is going to pass this on the certificate of urgency. Um, <laughs> will you be in Parliament to? make your point to them oh. one they consider this tomorrow or indeed this week <laughs> well i have not i have not planned to go to the parliament but at least this is an opportunity for me to express my my view mm. i am not comfortable with the enforcement you 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 set, you set a good example for example on our traffic you see how people motor motor riders ride through the red light do we have laws in this country do we have re so so even in in cultivating this cannabis that we're talking about, in legalizing this, we are saying that our enforcement regime is so weak that people will ride on the back of this kind of brand and come in with mm. the other brand that can be so injur well, injurious. I, and indeed, beyond the economics, we have to look at the human, human side of it. The destruction that drugs generally, including including what we are talking about now, that's to the human, human body and the human yeah, uh, Sheikh, human, human state. Sheikh, and that's exactly what we are, we are worried about. Sheikh, thank you very much. I, I, I'm grateful also the chair of the, of the committee uh, that is looking at this. Also, Nana, grateful. Um, I, will you be in parliament to support them? Of course I will. Okay, well, you'll be, you'll be there to oppose, to, to show your protest? We no? will. We'll okay. have other means. Oh, okay, stay well, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> and, and stay with us because right after this, we're having this conversation, the conversation with the individual bondholders who are occupying the finance ministry and remember pm express is always brought to you by cherry tree properties we develop spaces as though we are going to occupy them ourselves syntax tanks it is strong it is tough a little bit has experienced greatness in every moment in the ghana aids commission now syntax tanks no matter your water needs syntax tanks has it all syntax tank is first to introduce the double layer tank and now you can have as many layers as you want syntax tanks is first to introduce the white uh, layer tank and now you can have uh, at all in Ghana. We now introduce you to the customer specs order, which lets you order any color and size of your preference, the longest warranty of seven years, which no other tanks gives you in Ghana, by the way. Uh, so whatever your, whatever consumption size of project or demand, choose Syntex Tank. We have agents nationwide. Call us is 0244-335168 or shop at SyntexGH.com. Uh, Syntex Tank, a strong, a tough, and also Desires our wishes. Beauty is a promise of happiness, but um, passion is everything. Thinking about buying a new home. Talk to those who build with passion. Sloan Square, a new gated community development at Sakumano. Developed by Cherry Tree Properties, one of a kind, well-planned luxury you have never experienced. Also call them on 0553-662-366. 0553-662-366. Sophistication and class. Senor Hossi and Dr. George Jangba. Occupying Finance Ministry up next here on PM Express.